SpaceX has never failed to capture the headlines with their achievements one after another. Fully reusing rockets is always one of the biggest goals for SpaceX when it comes to Starship. Aside from reliable engines or skillful flip maneuvers, Starship also needs the support of an important system in order to do these things, the heat shield. Along with the development of Starship, the heat shield system is always modified and upgraded by SpaceX, but the problems with this system are still a lot, and they pose challenges for SpaceX after every flight. They are not only achieving these difficult feats, but are also making the developments public for space enthusiasts. However, nothing can stop SpaceX. This is evident as we are on the road to Flight 4. Recently, they've revealed yet another significant change about the Starship and its infrastructure, and we'll dive into the details of this latest update in this video. Before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about the Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. Without doing too much analysis, we all understand that Flight 3 is the farthest flight that SpaceX has achieved. The Starship has indeed reached orbital altitude, conducted important missions, and began its descent. During the process of returning to Earth, which is also known as re-entry, Starship also created an impressive moment when we saw the heat shield tiles withstand extreme amounts of heat, showing the plasma fields surrounding the tiles. This once again emphasizes the accomplishments that SpaceX has achieved after many upgrades to the system, and this is an important basis for successful landing in the upcoming flight for. But what upgrades has SpaceX made so far, as well as what will they do in order to achieve that goal? Perhaps you all still remember that during Flight 1, back in April of 2023, aside from the engine, the heat shield was also the system that received a lot of attention, as a lot of them fell off right after the liftoff. This goes to show that the connection between the tiles and the pins is still unstable. By Flight 2, this still occurred, but was significantly less. And finally, in Flight 3, it once again became the focus of attention when many picked up fallen heat shields. When S-29 began re-entry, we also saw that some points on the ship were no longer covered with heat shields. The problems with the heat shield in the initial two flights have been mulled over previously, so let's focus more on the most recent flight. Indeed, after this particular flight, many hypotheses were pointed out. For example, the problem at the attachment point between the pins and the tiles, and the problem of the welding points between the pins and the ship. But it seems that these two possibilities are neither correct, because if they were the sole reason, the tiles would have been broken previously, or the pins would be still attached to the fallen tiles. Yet, the tiles were picked up after the flight and did not show these signs. Instead, the problems with the heat shields may stem from the following reasons. Firstly, the tiles were not attached properly, possibly because the bolts were not tightened to hold the tiles. This is understandable because with a quantity of up to 18,000 bricks, checking each one can be quite the daunting task. Another possibility may be related to the effects of pre-flight preparations, like stacking, de-stacking, fuel loading, and venting. These stages often cause large vibrations and sudden temperature changes, resulting in the attachment ability of tiles and pins being affected. Additionally, the heat of the re-entry process can also affect the link between pins and tiles. Now if these were actual causes for this, then how would SpaceX solve them? For many, the problem of checking attachments is easy to solve, because SpaceX only needs to increase human resources for this task. But on the contrary, problems caused by preparation processes or impacts during flight will be more difficult to solve because it will take a lot of time, and can pose a danger to workers, preventing approach to the vehicle, preventing approach to the prototype in order to check what it is loading fuel or venting. Therefore, it is thought that what SpaceX can do about this is to further upgrade the system designed to increase the link between shield, tiles, and pins. In fact, recently after the static fire test, SpaceX rolled the S-29 to the production site. They immediately upgraded the S-29 nose comb by removing the heat shield in this part to create a new modification with the system. It's unclear what said modification will be, but it is believed to be very interesting. One of the methods that SpaceX often applies is reducing the size and increasing the number of heat shields. They applied this technique before when increasing the number of tiles on the S-24 prototype when compared to the S-20. This is clearly shown when in the recent version, the pins to fix the heat shield are thicker than before. 
Compared to larger tiles, smaller ones are lighter, more durable, and less affected by strong vibrations and extreme temperatures. Moreover, with this change, SpaceX can install the heat shield system for complex parts like flaps. Additionally, SpaceX may need to reinforce the pin systems, although all hypotheses show that this system is not the cause of the recent heat shield detachment. Many believe SpaceX still needs to focus on this system in order to increase reliability for future flights. At the same time, SpaceX also needs to think of new designs to increase the resistance limit of the heat shield. It not only helps the tiles work well in flight, but also limits the effects of those factors on their ability to attach the pins. This upgrade will also be an important preparation when Starship aims for further missions in space where environments are even harsher compared to atmospheric reentry. And of course, these upgrades will be still closely combined with previous important upgrades. SpaceX has been making notable changes to its Starship launch tower in Florida, moving away from routine upgrades to more significant modifications of the launch infrastructure. These actions indicate a shift in strategy for the Starship program and have sparked widespread speculation about SpaceX's future plans. Recently, the company began dismantling the legs of the original launch mount, leading to various theories about the reasons behind this decision. While some initially thought SpaceX might reduce the number of legs from 6 to 3 to potentially improve stability, it now seems the entire structure might be redesigned or replaced. The structural changes at the launch tower could be driven by several factors. It's possible that technical issues with the orbital launch mount's durability were identified as signs of where became apparent after a few uses in Texas. This were contradicts SpaceX's goal for rapid and frequent Starship launches. Alternatively, SpaceX might be planning a new design for the launch system, possibly incorporating a flame trench diverter. This new setup could offer operational advantages over the current configuration, and might influence future designs at the Starbase facility in Texas. This effort is not just about tweaking the launch infrastructure to support more Starship missions. Meanwhile, the pins to install heat shield tiles may not change compared to the current version. That means the pins will not have a change in size despite many revelations that smaller pins will be used. Even though these small ones do not appear in the body part, they will still be used in complex parts like the flap or nose cone. Additionally, there is another rounded cutout on the right side of the door. This may be the point where the chopstick will connect and lift the ship up. Previously, this point was close to the nose cone, so perhaps SpaceX moved it lower. Then an educated guess. This change will probably help create balance when Chopstick picks up the Starship as the new version will be larger. Currently, this image only shows two rings, and they are also the first parts created. Therefore, the aforementioned predictions may change or be no longer true when SpaceX shows more rings. With that last bit of updates on the new version, SpaceX is currently still focusing on testing to get ready for Flight 4. Perhaps you remember that on March 19th, the work with the booster quick disconnect took place. The entire rear section was lifted down, then the methane and liquid oxygen fuel hoses were also removed. And after over a week on the evening of March 28th as well as March 29th Central, the new fuel hoses were replaced. After completing this work, by March 30th, the rear cover of the booster quick disconnect was returned to the orbital launch mount, orbital launch mount, and was then lifted and installed on the booster quick disconnect that same day. Entering the first day of April, other activities also continued. The vaporizers have been placed outside near the tank farm area. Works on chopstick wiring have also been completed. Ship Quick Disconnect on Launch Tower is also having its wiring system repaired to be ready to wait for ship or the booster to arrive. By the second, the orbital launch mount had a strong vending process. This is probably to test the reliability of the new pipe system, as well as the fluid bunker and entire orbital launch mount. This vending process is also aimed to blow away the debris that appears in these systems during the repair and installation process, ensuring that the upcoming B-11 and S-29 testing process goes smoothly. Also on the second, another notable activity was performed. Some trucks delivered water tanks arriving at the launch site. These are the first signs of water tanks to arrive here after Flight 3. This act shows that B-11 and S-29 may soon arrive at the launch pad. Most recently, the transport stand arrived at Mega Bay, and some have speculated that the booster will be rolled out this weekend for tests taking place next week. And in addition to the preparations underway at the launch pad, an important test is imminent. 
scheduled from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening on April 5th, the new row closure indicates a significant milestone ahead, with no prototypes currently present at the launch site and no brief row closure schedule for their relocation. It suggests that a critical system at the launch site will undergo testing. The focus is likely on the tank farm system, which has seen relatively few updates since Flight 3. Going back a few years ago, we all remember that the heat shield was not fully installed on prototypes like they are now. This is understandable because the first prototypes were mainly for tests at low altitudes. But by the S-20, the first prototype fully stacked with the booster, the heat shield system covered half of the ship prototype. This certainly had a major contribution from the previous successful landing with SN-15 on May 5, 2021. After this success, SpaceX started aiming for further goals when Starship will fly to high altitudes of dozens, even hundreds of kilometers and back. So the added benefit of heat shields is an important upgrade. Unfortunately, the S-20 has never flown to date. In fact, the S-20 is not the first prototype to have a heat shield installed. These tiles were installed right from the Starhopper. However, the number of installed heat shields at the time was very few and only appeared in some parts. Gradually, the number of tiles increased in subsequent prototypes, and by SN15, the number of tiles increased to 829. As previously mentioned before, the success of SN15 is a turning point for the development of heat shield systems. Covering half of the S20 prototype, SpaceX used up to 17,000 bricks. Since then, the heat shield installation for half of the ship has been applied to the following prototypes except for the S26. But of course, the number of tiles still increased. For example, S24 used 18,000 heat shields. Many designs even increased this number up to 25,000. Basically, Starship's heat shield is similar to the heat shields used in previous reusable vehicles like the Space Shuttle or Dragon. Tiles made from silicate can withstand heat up to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit or nearly 1,500 degrees Celsius, a temperature that can destroy materials used to make rockets like carbon fiber, aluminum, or even stainless steel. For example, aluminum and carbon fiber can only withstand temperatures around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. SpaceX recognized this limit and decided to use stainless steel with a higher temperature limit of 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. But that was not enough to withstand the huge amount of heat that takes place in the reentry process. Hence, the addition of heat shield tiles. One difference between the heat shield system on Starship and other vehicles is the use of hexagonal shaped tiles instead of square ones. According to Elon Musk, the hexagon is a great shape because it will have no straight path for hot gas to accelerate through the gaps. In other words, the gap between the hexagonal shields will create many nooks and crannies, making it impossible for heat streams to transfer in straight lines and impact directly on the prototype. Additionally, Musk also mentioned the cooling system to protect spacecraft when the heat shield eroded. Even cooling will be added wherever we see erosion of the shield. Starship needs to be ready to fly again immediately after landing. Zero refurbishment. Previously, behind each heat shield, SpaceX also added ceramic fiber mats to protect the ship in case of the heat shield falling. But it seems that the mattresses were later removed. Now more than ever, we're all really looking forward to a great landing on the upcoming flight for mission. SpaceX will still need to make many other important upgrades to the heat shield system in the meantime to solve all the problems with the heat shield system. But I believe that no challenges will be able to keep them at bay, as strides have continuously been made in each flight. The moment that the world's largest rocket returns from orbit with the support of an armor made by tens of thousands of tiles will happen and that is how Starship will officially step into the leadership position of the aerospace industry. It's also notably indicating its smooth post-flight performance. Nevertheless, conducting tests on this system, particularly on plumbing systems, is paramount to ensure its reliability for upcoming operations. These include the static fire test with B-11, which rests rehearsal, involving both stages, and ultimately Flight 4. So stay tuned for further updates on this essential test as we inch closer to unlocking new milestones in SpaceX's journey. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become.
an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time.